a company called Gujan Brothers Inc. from Bay City, Michigan. And I'm here today to talk about the design experiments of Mead and Jan Gujan. Um, a big disclaimer that um, pictures that I have dates um, belay the truth of launchings and the sequence of things. So we've done our best at Gujan Brothers to recreate those events. Oh, thank you, Aaron. Um, sailing Barge, 1948. This is where it started. Um, there's Mead's first uh, tuning of a rig, and for anybody who knew him, he was an expert <coughs> rig tuner. Um, Bay City, Michigan is right here, and the Saginaw Bay plays a big role in the development of their designs because um, it's very light air most of the time, but when it blows 12, it is brutal chop. Um, they evolved to the Optimus Pram, like most sailors do. Um, this is Jan winning his first awards at anything ever in the Optimus Pram, and that is actually a Pram built by J.R. Watson who is um, a long-term employee of Gujan Brothers and the, the fourth brother. So they built a set of prams um, to explore the Saginaw Bay. They quickly grew up, as you can see, and they moved to ice boats. Ice boating is crazy in the upper Midwest, um, very popular. Of course, they did not design the DN ice boat, but they learned a lot from the DN ice boats. And what they learned is about rigs, about sailing angles, um, about the fuselage concept, about low drag, um, low friction, and they really applied those concepts to their future boats, like E1 on your left and E3-1 on your right, both 1963. Um, E1 is a mystery. It was a terrible failure. When you would ask Mead what happened, he said, muttered something about too many moving parts and something about a sliding singular aka. Um, it was a disaster. Uh, and then E3 was Jan's first boat. Pencil was experiment number two for me, designed in 1964. Um, Pencil was also a terrible failure. Within the first few days after launching, it broke up under its own loads. We talk about new ideas at Petra Kutcha. Um, what I'd like to leave you with as a new idea is that failure is not only option, but failure and reiteration is a necessity. We 32 after We 31 broke off the leeward AWA, at about eight knots of wind, it was time for We 32 Looks very much like E31 but most notably is the DN ice boat rig uh, model stuck to the top of it. So it was about building a more robust boat for Jan in 1965, the second iteration of We 3 uh, Mead's experiment number three, you notice the E3 in the corner. Each boat had a sail number to denote its experiment number. E3, 1965, is a boat called Omega. In two iterations, this massive ugly wing structure here on your left and a really wacky truss type engineered structure on your right. Omega was the first boat that brought any notoriety to the Gujan Brothers. Experiment number four, 1968, Victor T, named after multi hull uh, pioneer Victor Techet, um, was 320 pounds that boat. Uh, it did very well on the racing circuit and really brought attention to Gujan Brothers as designers and builders. By the way, they built lots of boats, but we're talking about their designs, like experiment number five. 20 seconds goes by fast while you're up here. <laughs> experiment number five, uh, Mead Gujan designed 1970 Adagio. Um, Adagio is an incredible experiment. We're going to talk a little bit more about her. She's still sailing today. Mead's experiment number five to get to that boat. Uh, she's going to be 50 years old next year or the year after. Ah, two, two failed design experiments dug deep from the Gujan archives. This is foiling boats in 1970. Uh, they could not sail and foil, but they could be towed and foil, as you can see in the here. Um, they built these boats, they towed them, they figured this is crazy, let's move on to something else. Um, like Flicka, and Flicka was designed and launched in 1977. Flicka was a very good boat. Uh, Jan was using her to qualify for the O-Star back then. Uh, she went turtle, which for you, you know, single haul, lead haulers, um, it's upside down. And she sat that way in the Atlantic. Jan was on the boat for four days until a passing Russian freighter picked him up. And he said, I will never build another boat that I can't self-rescue, which was the impetus for Splinter. Splinter in 1980 was drawn on the inverted ceiling of Flicka in 1977. <laughs> he had four days to design his next boat. Uh, Splinter is really remarkable because it is self-rescuing. You Note know, the change in the Ama design, but if she goes on her side, she will not go turtle. Ali is a 35-foot scaled-up version of Splinter, built a few years later in 84. Ali is very quite roomy below. It's the Gujan Brothers' interpretation of a racer cruiser. Um, it has a bunk in it, which is really 
awesome for a multi-haul racing guy. Um, it's a beautiful boat, again, self-rescuing, new AMA design. Blew up to the Formula 40 Adrenaline in 1987, uh, raced with the big cats, um, did very, very well, um, has articulating AMAs like a couple of Meads boats before, but this really pushed the concept that the AMAs could take oncoming waves um, to, the, to the pro circuit. Um, it was very successful, so what happens is they outlaw trimarans in the Formula 40. Um, my favorite boat and the quintessential Gujan boat, um, again, a commercial failure, but is the Gujan 32 or the G32. 14 was built in 1990. The funny blimp on the top, again, is about self-rescuing. The boat can lay on its side and be articulated to stand back up under her own power. Um, as the brothers aged, they needed power boats like all old dudes do. So in 2004, they built these wonderful Gouge Morans, they called them, on a couple, on a couple Dick Newick design halls. So we have to give credit to Nick's, uh, Dick's wonderful engineering there. Uh, but as you can see, it's still very Gouge on the, the forward uh, um, hatch comes down to let Granny off and on the boat from the beach. Strings is a big version of a G32 um, racing machine that is a catamaran on a setter fuselage, not a trimaran. The blimp on top or the dirigible has to get much larger to take the loads of the boat laying on its side. Um, Strings is still an ongoing experiment um, after Jan's passing some friends and family say that. Another terrible failure is Yellow Thing. <laughs> and Yellow Thing had a jib, it had a spinnaker, it has a rudder, it can be pulled, it can be paddled, it had a hiking bench sort of thing, um, it had a, a, a a lawn chair, <laughs> that would be, also had a napping bench. Terrible failure for the Everglades Challenge. He had abandoned but elderly care of the smaller boat there. He um, did complete that race in six hours and 10 minutes at the age of 76. So 49 and 34 years later, we come back to these two boats that are 49 and 34 years old respect, uh, respectively. Um, they are racing machines. Adagio here, which is our boat now, um, is the fastest rated boat on the Great Lakes under 42 feet. And we got a lot of boats. They rate faster than Santa Cruz 70s. Um, Ollie and Strings rate on par with Santa Cruz 70s. So there's lots of iterations, and boy, like six minutes goes by fast. fast, right? Um, so I'll just wrap up to say, <coughs> failure is an option. It is a necessity. Um, we always think you build, you sail, you test, you break, you repeat the next winter and try it all again next summer. So for all you folks here developing new ideas, the only thing that I think Jan and Gujan would pass on to you is it's okay to break it, um, to start over again. So I'm honored to give you a little bit of our history and their history. Thank you, Carl, and thank you, everybody.